In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem called calculating the mass of a gas collected over water. So in this problem, we have this scenario over here where we have a reaction taking place in a flask. This reaction is generating a gas. The gas is being passed through this tube up into this upside down test tube looking thing. The gas is being collected up in this space inside the test tube. And the gas is being collected over the surface of water. And the problem is asking us to calculate the number of grams of gas that's being collected in this space up here. So it's telling us that um, the area up here, the gas temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. The final volume of the gas is 120 milliliters. And that's the only information that it's just straight up giving us. And then we have to calculate the grams of the gas. We know because this is a gas problem that we're going to be using PV equals NRT. N is obviously the variable that we're trying to solve for because we are trying to figure out how many grams we have. The problem is telling us that our temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. We're going to need to convert that to Kelvin, which we can do. And it's telling us that the volume is 120 milliliters, which will convert to liters. But it's not giving any information about the pressure. It does tell us we could make normal and reasonable assumptions about the conditions and the nature of the gases. And these normal and reasonable assumptions is where we're going to get the information about the pressure that we need to finish solving this problem. So first of all, because this is an open system, so there isn't like any kind of closure on this container right here, the atmospheric pressure pushing down on this water right here helps to equalize and stabilize the pressure that's in this space up above the gas. And the normal and reasonable assumption about atmospheric pressure is that it's one atmosphere. So we can make a normal and reasonable assumption that the pressure, the total pressure is one atmosphere the total pressure of all of the gases out here and also the total pressure of the gases that are being collected inside this tube. Total pressure of one atmosphere. Even though we are collecting um, CO2 gas in this space right here, a little bit of water is going to vaporize and exist up in this area here as well. So this P total um, if we're talking about this space right here, the P total is going to be the pressure of the CO2 gas that our reaction is generating. And it's also going to be the pressure of any water gas that might, um, that might be evaporating up above the surface of this water inside the collection tube. We, we really just need to know the pressure of CO2. That's the part that we're gonna plug in over here in this equation. But in order to figure this out, we need to know the pressure of H2O. We've gotta get that information. This partial pressure of H2O is referred to as the vapor pressure of water, sometimes just the vapor pressure. And it is a constant that's temperature dependent. And you can get this information from Alex. So let me, I'm going to go back to my actual Alex page and show you where to find that in your data table on the little bar graph here. Click on that. One of the tabs that you have in here is the, it closed itself, um, vapor pressure of water at selected temperatures. So we're going to click on that and this, um, let's see, the temperature of this problem is 40 degrees Celsius. So we're looking for the vapor pressure at 40 degrees C. It's 55.37, let's pay attention to the units, 55.37 Tor. So that's the vapor pressure of our water. Let's take this information back over here. 55.37 Tor. I wanna double check that, I copied that correctly. 55.37 Tor. Um, now we do have some inconsistencies with our units. The total pressure is one atmosphere and the vapor pressure is in units of tor. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is convert from tor to atmospheres. The vapor pressure is in units of atmospheres, 0 0.07286. We can use Dalton's law of partial pressure. I'm gonna squeeze that down here. The total pressure is the partial pressure of the CO2 plus the partial pressure of the H2O. Using Dalton's law, we get the partial pressure of CO2 is the total pressure minus the partial pressure of H2O. 
one atmosphere minus 0 0.07286 atmospheres. And that gives us a partial pressure of CO2 of 0.927 atmospheres. So we have everything we need to solve for N. Let's get these converted into the correct units. The volume is 0 0.120 liters. The temperature in units of Kelvin is 313. And we can just plug everything in and solve for N. N is P over V, or P times V over R times T. And would you guys mind if I just left the units off? Like one of the things that I hate the most about solving ideal gas law problems is the units just make these problems enormous. So I'm going to leave the units off and I hope that, hope that that doesn't devastate you. Just to make it take up less space. Now, when you're doing this problem yourself for Alex, like I am always warning you, make sure that you're not, like I'm doing, I'm rounding as I go and writing numbers down, make sure that you don't do any rounding um, because it, it really messes with your answers in Alex sometimes. So I got 0 0.004331 moles of CO2, and then I just need to convert that into... Um, grams using the molecular weight of CO2. One mole of CO2 is 44 grams. Again, never round molecular weights for Alex because it doesn't like it. And I get 0 0.19, um, it says two significant digits, so 0.19 grams of CO2. And that may not be exactly the right answer because like I said, I've rounded and you shouldn't round when you're solving problems with Alex, but this is the, um, this is the strategy that you'll take to solve this problem.